Uh, welcome back everyone. In our previous episode, we took a look at how to host our module on uh, GitHub. But the issue there is that we don't have any version numbers. And without a version number, it's kind of like going YOLO and hoping and praying that your infrastructure works. And we definitely don't want that. So today we are going to take a look at how to add some versioning to our existing Terraform module. Uh, and we're going to do that by firstly adding it to GitHub by tagging the code. And then we're going to move on to uh, Terraform Cloud and actually host our module using HashiCorp's um, own infrastructure and show you how that works. So let's jump into the code. So we are back inside our Cloud9 environment and it is exactly where we left things off with the previous video. So what do we wanna do? Well, what we wanna do is to change this line to be have some kind of version number or add some kind of attribute here so we can specify what version of a module we want to use. The reason this is important is that as you make changes to your infrastructure definitions, um, your downstream users or other people consuming the module might not want to just grab whatever the latest uh, version is because of specific reasons. And also it gives them an indication of what has changed. So let's quickly think about how we can do this. Well, when we look at the Terraform documentation, and let me open up that page quickly. So when you look at the documentation on Terraform, what you'll see is that there's no explicit mention here about versioning and GitHub. And the reason for this is that it's not directly supported. You can make use of GitHub's uh, tags and branches to be able to um, implement versions like we'll do now in a moment. Um, but this is one of the things to take into account in terms of where you want to store your module. Uh, the recommended way is by making use of Terraform Cloud's um, storage for these. And we're going to go through this um, at the end of this video as well. So stick around for that part. So what we're going to start off doing is that we're going to head over to GitHub and we are going to tag our repository with the version. And then I'll show you how we use that inside our code. So if we take a look at our GitHub repo, we can see that currently we have zero tags um, and there's nothing over here. So to create a tag, we're going to head back into our code um, repository over here. We're simply going to say git tag and we're going to call this v1.0.0 because this is our very first release. Now we've tagged the, um, the code locally and we need to push it to GitHub. So we're going to say GitHub push double dash tags. And I was going to ask for my key again. Let me punch that in. And now we have got a tag on GitHub. So let's just wait for that to finish quickly. We are done. Refresh. And we have got a tag and I can click on that. We can see over here, release tags and all of that. So now what we need to do is we need to go and update our Terraform code to actually reference this. And to do that, we simply head in here and then we scroll back to, sorry, where our module is over here. And we make the following change. And the syntax is just a question mark, ref equals v1.0.0. Cool. Now to make use of this, we just have to go to our actual project directory, which is uh, the AWS one over here. Cool. And now we just go Terraform get slash update and it'll actually go and pull that new version. You can see over here that now it said specifically that it's downloading that version. So now we are using this. Now there are a couple of limitations to this, um, which we'll want to address, uh, which is the first being you have to be explicit with your version number. So for example, I can't say, get me a version less than, for example, version two. I have to say the exact specific version. So you can't make use of what's known as semantic versioning. You can do that if you use um, the Terraform module that's stored inside a, uh, sorry, inside Terraform Cloud. So you can then go something like this, where you say uh, version is equal, and you can specify with the various ways, um, saying 1.0.0, .0 .0, or for example, if it needs to be uh, more than that one or exactly that one, etc. There are a couple of ways that you can specify this. So let's quickly take a look at how we can get our module into Terraform Cloud because that'll give us that additional flexibility that we want. So to do that, let's head over to Terraform Cloud over here. And what we're going to say is we are going to add a module. Now I've created this as a brand new um, uh, organization inside my Terraform Cloud account. So we're going to see every single step and I've made sure not to click anything. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we want is we want to connect to GitHub and we can say it's just github.com like that. And now what we can say over here is a set of instructions that we have to follow with regard to the application name um, and the setup that we have to do. So let's quickly go ahead and follow these instructions. And to do that, we just click on this link over here that says register new OAuth application and open it up in a new window. And we can see that it wants a new one. So let's go ahead and copy all of the values from here and just paste it in. They've made it really easy for you. Sorry, there we go. Homepage URL. There we go. Application description. Any description of your choice. Let's just say uh, Terraform cloud access and lastly the callback url which i will be deleting and changing off this video i do not unfortunately trust the viewers cool register my application 
Now what we can see over here is this is the secret and I will go ahead and delete all of these and make sure that we don't have any security issues afterwards. So let's go ahead and see what we want on this side, which is firstly a name. We're gonna say github.com client ID. Let's grab it from here. And then we go over here and we paste it and we also paste the client secret over here. And we put that in there. And then we say connect and continue. And now what you can see is it says success. And it goes through all of the different things that I have over here. Um, I'm going to be blurring out some of this information down here. Don't worry about that. And I'm giving it access to all um, of my public repos. So let's go ahead and say authorize quibus. And now it says cool. Authorize is in progress. And what we can see over here is we now have got uh, some additional configuration that we have to do. So let's take a look at what um, Terraform wants us to do next. Okay, so it needs me to create a, an SSH key pair and it gives me the command over here. So I'm going to take this quickly and jump back to my uh, config over here. So let's just do that and let's just paste quickly and see what we have. So, okay, I definitely don't want to leave it in that directory. So this is a um, Mac OS version of where the file is going to be stored. In my case, I just want to put it in my home directory and we're going to call it that remove the last one over here and there we go now it's asking me for a passphrase for this so let me punch that in quickly uh, oh no i'm not supposed to create a passphrase sorry apologies about that hit that again and we have our key so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, paste the public or oh, sorry the private portion of the key into this window but i'm not going to share that on the screen so back in a second Cool, so now I need to also add the key to my uh, GitHub um, account. So I'm going to go back to my GitHub page over here. Uh, click on my user, settings, uh, SSH and GPG keys. I'm going to say new SSH key. And I will paste this in here and call this the uh, Terraform Cloud one. So let's go ahead and say add key. And now I should be done. So if I go back to my Terraform Cloud page over here, we can see that it appears that everything is good to go. So let's go um, ahead and figure out what we need to do next uh, to make sure that this actual module builds. Okay, to do that, we head back to the module section over here. And what you can see is that we click the add module button again. And the difference now is that we have this button down here that says connect a different VCS. So now what we see over here is that, is that it's looking for a um, repository called terraform-provider-name. Now, our repo doesn't have that name. So let's go ahead and actually rename our repository quickly. So now to add the module, we go back up here to the module section. We click on the add module. We go ahead and say use GitHub because that box is now available to us. And now we need to pick what repository to pick. And our repository is not showing because this is our repo, which is TF module example. Now, if I go back to the Terraform page over here, it says the format needs to be Terraform provider name. So we need to go and rename our repo. So let's quickly do that by clicking on settings. And then we are going to call this uh, Terraform AWS um, example for now. Okay, and we just hit enter and now the repo has been renamed. So now we can go back to the module over here and I'm just going to hit back and then click on GitHub again. Oh, click on add module, then click on GitHub. And then finally, we are going to see our repo over here. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I say publish the module. Now it, sees, it tells us that it's waiting for the module to become ready. And what we can see over here is the detail. Our module is now up and running. And what we can see is that we also have got uh, our readme showing up over here, um, as well as, for example, um, how many people have used this module, the version of a module, etc. So now what happens is if we were to go and push a new version of our module, uh, Terraform Cloud should automatically pick that up um, and add that version first. So let's go ahead and actually do that quickly. So for that, we're going to head back to our Cloud9 environment over here. So let's start by changing our readme. So we open up the readme file, just give it a little bit of extra text, sample usage, save that. And what we need to remember here is that our repo needs to now point to that new location. So to do that, we go to our repo over here. We click on code, copy that, head back to our repo and we say git or uh, sorry, git remote set URL origin and give it the new repo location. Cool. Um, and we're going to clean that up. And what we need to do now is to commit this and push this. So git add, bonk, oh, git add, dunk, git commits a new version. Yes, that's not very useful. Um, and what we also want to do is we want to say git tag this with v1.0.1. Cool. 
And now we can say git push and then git push. Oh, my key. And now it's going to push. And we're going to go and say git push dash tags as well, because we want to get those tags onto the repo. Cool. There we go. So let's just confirm quickly on our um, app over here, or sorry, on our GitHub repo that we have got our two tags. And yes, we can see the two tags. So let's take a look at what happens, what is happening on the Terraform side of things now. And for that, we just head back over to the Terraform cloud over here. And I can just refresh the page and let's see what happens. It's okay. So we're still on version one. Cool. So it doesn't auto change the page. So let's go have a look at what modules I have under my repo. And voila, we can see that version 1.1 is available. So let's quickly click on it. And now you can see that we've already been bumped to version 1.01. So now we've got one more thing left to do. We need to go back to our uh, original source code and actually change it to make use of this Terraform hosted module instead of making use of the GitHub repo hosted module. So let's hit in, back into our code and go fix that quickly. So if we go back in our example over here in examples, now we don't want to do the source in, uh, anymore. So we need to replace this whole string. And to get this value, we go look at our module over here and we can see that uh, this module is uh, with, oh, here we go. We can just grab this, the module over there. And let's paste it in here because then we can actually steal some of the values from there. So we can see that it says app terraform IO Quibus Bernard examples AWS. Um, and let's pop that in there. And I'm going to say version like this and just use that specific version. Okay. And now let's just delete over here. Cool. And now what I can do is now I just need to go back to that Terraform directory, um, which is TF uh, AWS, that one. And we can say uh, Terraform, sorry, Terraform get again, get update. And oh, now we see we've got an error. So let's figure out what that error is. What did we do wrong? Because we clearly made a mistake somewhere. The error that we see here is a 401 unauthorized. Hmm. So what that means is that we don't have permission to actually pull this module. And it kind of makes sense because we didn't ever set this module to be public and we didn't set up any kind of credential set between this um, EC2 Linux instance and the Terraform cloud. So what we need to do to do that is that we can see over here is that it has got a little section that says heads up and we need to go create um, um, a configuration file for this. Now, to do that, we're going to go back and say, uh, just quickly over here, vi dot terraform rc like that. We insert this value as is, and I'm quickly going to create a uh, key here on my Terraform account. And to do that, I click on my user up here, and then go to user settings. And then over here, you'll see there is a section for tokens, and I'm going to create an API token. So this description will be, um, let's just call it YouTube uh, demo like that. And we say create API token. And now I can copy it. And there's a warning here that says this token will not be displayed again. So once again, this will be blurred out. So sorry about that. But um, it is in the format of a bunch of letters dot atlas v1 dot and a whole bunch of other letters. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this back into our file over here. So I'm just going to go and delete out this other text. Uh, sorry, I'm not a Vim expert, so I don't know what the keyboard shortcut for that is. We paste it in, we write that file, and now we go ahead and see if we can do our plan again. So let's say Terraform get update. And now we should be able to pull our module and voila, we have got our module. So now we've got the new version of our module. Um, so the last thing I want to cover today is how do we uh, pin the version and make sure that we don't deal with the wrong um, version and accidentally upgrade our repository. Sorry, not repository, our infrastructure. So once again, let's go back to our previous version um, of the code. So TF uh, module, there we go. And I am going to go into the main over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this for now. So let's say uh, this is called sample two. It's exactly the same. And outputs, what we're going to do is we're going to output both of them. Because what I want to show you is an output that we want to create two instances. We're going to call this literally just dash two. Uh, underscore sorry underscore two there we go really not useful uh ec2 instance uh, let's just call it hash two like that that we created cool now we've got a new version in air quotes so get add get commit a uh, new version again get tag um, v1.1 uh, let's just do it that way 
and we say git push. Okay. Push the, uh, the code. We push the tags. Oh, not tags, tags. And almost done. Boom, there we are. So now we've got a new version. So when I go back to my example over here, uh, we can see that currently I say version 1.1. So if I just jump back to the previous directory and I do a get again, uh, sorry, uh, get, there we go. Uh, no, that one, update. Um, you can see that it's pulling version 1.01. Now what I can do over here is this is now pinned exactly to that version. But what I can say is that any version um, greater or equal to this version. So let's quickly see what happens when I run the update now. Let's just clean this first um, and hit enter. And ooh, there we go. All of a sudden I'm down downloading version 1.1.0 and not 1.0.1 which is where the difference comes in. So this is how you bring versioning to your infrastructure as well. Because remember, the modules have got versions and now our own code can actually pick which version to do. And in turn, when we commit this code, we will version this code to make sure that at a specific time in um, the history, there was a version that used version 1.01 and afterwards there was another version that used version 1.10. So that's it for versioning and Terraform modules for today. Uh, thanks for joining. And if you did enjoy this, um, please hit the like button because that helps other people find it. Also, please use the comments down below to tell me what you like about this episode or questions you have, or if you want me to cover some other uh, AWS or Terraform or in general content that you want me to cover. Um, also keep a, an eye out for next episodes and the easiest way is, is to hit the subscribe button. And speaking of the next episode, what are we going to do next? Well. I'm going to be showing you how to set up an AWS account per environment. So we'll have one for dev, one for testing, and one for production. And then with Terraform, we're going to configure it so that it's able to jump between those different accounts, but using only one set of credentials. So you don't have to have a user per account that you're dealing with. Um, and that's known as role switching. So keep an eye out for that next episode. Bye.